In today's video, we will discuss a little about kinematics as the branch of physics in which we discuss bodies at rest or motion without mentioning what causes the motion or rest. What is rest? If a body does not change its position with respect to a reference frame, then the body is said to be in a state of rest. For example, if you are sitting on a bench by a busy road, you are in a state of rest with respect to the benches, bushes and the object nearby. What is motion? If a body continuously changes its position with respect to a reference frame, then it is said to be in a state of motion. For example, if you are walking in an empty park, you are in a state of motion with respect to the trees, benches and light poles around you. Please note that rest and motion will always be relative to the reference used. When you and your friend sit side by side inside a bus, you are at rest with respect to your friend because you move together with him. But both of you are in motion with regard to the observer outside. When you stand still on the field, you are at rest relative to Earth. With the Sun as the reference, you are in motion. Types of motion Translational motion The motion of the body where the body moves in a linear path is called translatory motion. The movement can be in a straight line, also called rectilinear motion, or a curved path, also called curvilinear motion. Many activities that happen in our daily life, like a bullet fired from a gun, or kicking a ball are examples of translatory motion. Rotational motion. The type of motion in which a body rotates around a fixed point or axis is called rotational motion. For example, the motion of the ferris wheel or the motion of the wind vane when the wind strikes it. Vibrational motion. Type of motion in which a body or particle moves back and forth about a fixed point or equilibrium position. An example of this includes the motion of the swing that your little brother plays on and the movement of a string of a guitar that you pick. Now, can you mention other examples of the three motions? Write your answers in the comment section below. Imagine we're going to the market by walking 30 meters straight and then take a left turn for another 40 meters walk. The total length of path traveled can be defined as distance. And in this case, 70 meters is the distance from our home to the market. Now, what is displacement? Displacement is the shortest distance from our home to the market. If we look at this figure closely, we can see that this path forms a right triangle. Thus, we can calculate the displacement by solving the hypotenuse of the triangle using the formula c squared equals a squared plus b squared, where a is the base of the triangle, b is the perpendicular, and c is the hypotenuse. Inserting the values, we get c squared equals 2,500 meters, C equals square root of 2,500, which is equal to 50 meters, much shorter than the actual distance of 70 meters. The other difference between distance and displacement is that distance is a scalar quantity, which means that it only measures magnitude, while displacement is a vector quantity, which include both magnitude and direction. So, when talking about displacement, we also need to mention its direction. Therefore, the distance is 70 meters and the displacement is 50 meters northeast. If we want to know the travel distance of going to the market and coming back, we will need to sum up the numbers 40 meters plus 30 meters plus another 30 meters going back plus 40 meters to home for a total distance of 140 meters. Whereas the displacement will be zero. Can you tell us why? If it took us 100 seconds to reach the market, we can also calculate our speed. Speed can be defined as a rate at which something moves and can be calculated by measuring distance traveled in a particular time period. The equation can then be written as speed equals distance over time, which would then give us 0.7 meters per second. Since it's a scalar quantity, speed only contains magnitude. Velocity, on the other hand, which is defined as the rate at which an object changes its position, consists of both magnitude and direction. It can be calculated by measuring the rate at which an object is displaced in a particular time period. Velocity equals displacement over time. In our example, this would yield 0.5 meters per second northeast. Don't forget to write the direction, as velocity is a vector quantity. To conclude, both displacement and velocity are both function of position. The magnitude depends on whether an object changes its position and how far it is from this starting point. Have you ever watched Formula One? 
Many racers compete in a circuit to be the fastest to cross the finish line. Their maximum speed can reach 360 kilometers an hour. But right when they get across the finish line, their velocity is almost zero. How is that possible? We will do a little bit of a review. Speed. Speed, a scalar quantity, is determined by dividing the distance traveled by an object by the time elapsed. The international unit or SI unit for distance is meter and for time is second. In reality, it is difficult to race at a constant speed for the entire duration of the race, so usually the average speed is calculated. For example, a Formula One circuit has a length of 4 kilometers, and the cars need to complete 72 laps to finish the race. The winner completes all of them within 2 hours. So, the total distance of the car is equal to 288 kilometers, and the winner's average speed is 144 kilometers per hour. Converting the units into SI units, we can determine that its average speed is 40 meters per second. Velocity Velocity, a vector quantity, is determined by dividing the total displacement by the time elapsed. For example, as the driver goes past the halfway point for the first time, the average velocity can be counted by measuring the length between it and the start line, divided by the time elapsed. But as the drivers return to the initial place where they cross the finish line, their displacement is nearly zero because it is close to the same point as they start the race. Thus, their average velocity is also negligible compared to their average speed. We've made a simpler explanation on displacement and velocity, along with the introduction to scalar and vector quantities, somewhere in the channel. Now, back to the circuit. Before they race along the track, the car is at rest in the start line. When the red lights are turned off, do you think they just magically move at 200 km per hour from rest? Of course not. In physics, there is a certain term called acceleration. What actually happens is, when he sees the red lights turned off, the driver will push on his accelerator. His car will gradually move faster until it reaches a certain velocity. A body is said to be in acceleration if its velocity is changing. As the velocity is a vector quantity, the change can be in the magnitude or in the direction of the movement. Thus, we can say acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. If the velocity is increasing, we call it acceleration. When the velocity is decreasing, we call it deceleration or retardation. The standard unit for acceleration is the unit of velocity divided by the unit of time, which becomes meter per second squared. The acceleration can be better understood with the following example. If a car starts from rest and reaches a velocity of 72 km per hour in just 4 seconds, its acceleration can be counted as the initial velocity is zero since the car starts from rest, the final velocity is 20 meters per second, and the time elapsed is 4 seconds. Acceleration is then equal to 20 divided by 4, which is equal to 5 meters per second square. If the car is indeed increasing its velocity by 18 kilometers per hour each second, the car undergoes uniform acceleration. But if the car has different changes of velocity each second, for example, a higher increase due to the downhill or slowing due to the speed bump. It is called non-uniform acceleration. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.